Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam rahmatullah. Sayyidi, can we be encrypted without Dawis? And can we connect without Dawis? Or is it a condition required to connect? Forgive my ignorance. Without Tawis? They're all those are all separate realities. That's not to do with connection. But not related. There's a we, we teach by analogy so maybe people will comprehend things better. The you're asking me, can I go into a boxing match without any gloves and without a helmet? Heck yeah, go. You, you're gonna get badly hurt. But anybody's free to do anything they want. So when we teach something, if you come back and say, can I take these parts off? Yeah, you do that but that doesn't sound like a reasonable sort of thought process. We're telling you this is a battle. You say, can I go out? You know, without the condition of that battle, sure you can, uh, this world is free because if you're looking for an answer, no it's haram, it's not. These are all sort of non-obligatory. You know what, what is wajib and mandatory Allah has already outlined. This is all out of love. If you believe the teachings and you choose to do them out of love, more reward for you. Are they mandatory? Absolutely not. Is any of this teaching mandatory? Absolutely not. So that's why this is not a school of, of mandatory and, and the types of uh, authorities. That's why we don't give footnotes in our talks. We don't say, according to this authority, here's the footnote. According to this, this is this not a law class. This is a tariqah, this is a class based on spiritual taste. You have accomplished your Islamic understandings, now you're coming for your spiritual taste and perfection. In the schools of perfection then it's based on faith, oh my shaykh is giving me this formula for my protection. Now can I come and take parts of the formula out? You sure can but would you do it? Why? They say, I don't have a taweez shaykh. No, you can go online, print the taweez. Make du'a over it, read the names of the shaykhs over it, fold it up and put it in until you can order one. When you order one, you ignite that reality because of the support to the tariqah and to the way. So that's that's a separate… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, understanding but you can free to print them, fold it and put it into your pocket, make it a sharaf al Nabi and, and call upon the shaykhs and make your du'a. So why would you not? Because you're now entering into the world of unseen and the effects of unseen creatures and all the different uh, unseen elements in life and that's what's trying to be taught here is that you have to prepare yourself for all these unseen elements. So again those whom watch sci-fi movies they're now very descriptive. The sci-fi movie and one we were watching was describing their shaitans were describing their tattoos and they were saying they get power from these markings and all of a sudden their, their markings were lighting up with a power which we know and that's… we know that they're encasing themselves upon people with these markings so that the person can't get them out of their being. So they put these markings on people to lock themselves within the person. So definitely these talisman ta taweezes and these ruqiyah 
of what Prophet described of du'as from Qur'an, from the names of holy people given by Prophet to awliyaullah. Not written by Prophet like this here and sending it by their inspiration. Their whole life is by inspiration. So if anybody wants to know hadith, first you go study how hadith came, right? So you go study, you google it because you have fingers to search, how Imam Bukhari gathered hadith. He went and collected hadith but at the same time he would sit and make his connection with Prophet He was then told and inspired within his heart that this is correct incorrect and where to place it within the kitab and hadith. So everything was based on their connection to Prophet Not the Qur'an and not hadith came without these inspirations and the connection of pious people. So now it's like people don't even understand that concept and they say, where's the reference to it? For those whom compiled these books they did the same process. They connected their heart and were inspired on how to put and compile this whole hadith together. So this is the same system. When Prophet inspire only Allah that write this as a protection, that's their inspiration. And that's how ruqya comes to them is by their inspirations and their connection to Prophet Same way they're receiving these knowledges and these teachings that Prophet is alive and is continuously hadirun nadir is continuously around them. There's never a moment in which Prophet is not ever vigilant over the servants of Allah and those whom love Him because you be with whom you love. So based on their connection all these knowledges, all these realities, all these protections, everything is coming based on that connection. So their whole life is that connection, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what was the meaning of Prophet Musa's miracles, the stick and his hand and any others we may not be aware of? Sayyidina Musa had nine, nine miracles to dethrone Pharaoh. So alhamdulillah again to the nine and the reality of the sultanate and the kingdom. But the importance and the dialogue of Sayyidina Musa was in dealing with Pharaoh that for 40 years he had the patience to deal with Pharaoh to let his people to go free. And for 40 years his people would not stop the belief and the desire for material possessions. And every time he talked to Pharaoh, Pharaoh would become angered by him and then torture the people. But all the while he was waiting for his people to lose their dunya desire so that he could take them to the Promised Land. So that became the importance of continuously testing Pharaoh with the nine signs that came and more important to test his people to believe without their material possessions and that, that, that has a, a great reality. And Sayyidina Khidr and Sayyidina Musa salam is then in the pursuit of knowledges that he wanted to receive of a higher reality of rushd to become ripened by realities. And that, that has then its immensity and the reality of, of moving towards Prophet and was in which one must relinquish their title to reach to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Otherwise why would Nabi Musa take that level of humility if it wasn't for an immense reality that he wanted to prove that he wanted the Muhammadan realities and as a result he would be humbled by the Muhammadan representative. So that had an immense, immense reality. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. And what we described last night too that Sayyidina Musa was very dark skinned, 
of a black skin, very tall. So this is not the image that uh, the Hollywood has put out. Because people have emailed, don't we have any, any black prophets? Say, yeah, of course. The most famous one, one of the most famous ones, Sayyidina Musa Allah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Thank you for your incredible teachings on the ant that struggled to put out the fire of Nimrod. We would like to th ask, is this similar to the bee which gives its life to sting us, or the spider or mosquito or bed bugs which bite us, or the crow which screams at us? Are they working for the Muhammadan kingdom and risking their life to get the attention of a zalim and bring that zalim towards nur of Muhammad? <laughs> that was very poetic. <laughs> Yeah, again it's in this world of kingdom that there are many different things So a lot of this was mixed with other things. And the crow is something else and is, is used by more nefarious energies and they occupy through their eyes and the sound that the creature makes is of a very disruptive sound. Unlike the singing birds that praise in the morning. The singing birds that praise in the morning and praise at night, then those are the praise and those whom praise their Lord is of a different reality. And the, the witnessing at fajr time and maqrib time that as soon as they begin their praise means the prayer time is passing. When they begin their praise then maqrib time is coming. So it means these have many different realities and the, the bed bug that bites and takes away a difficulty from insan that everything that comes to a person, nothing is wasted in the way of Allah As soon as a person is affected, hurt or bitten, a burden must have taken from that individual that Allah's rahmah and mercy upon. So that's different than creatures that may be working for a, a negative energy versus the creatures that are working towards a positive energy. And Prophet described other creatures that shaitans can work through them and cause harm. Because of the lower nature of their vibration like a scorpion and these other creatures they cause great harm. So watch for them, stay away from them, the lizard and the serpent to be weary of them because the shaitans they can occupy them and the malignant creatures, the malignant jinn can enter into them to watch, to enter into a premises and they need a shelter within that physicality and that's the danger. They can enter into that creature and just sort of observe the person or enter the creature and try to harm the person. So we see it even in the sci-fi movies, they don't hide it. You see like a nefarious creature enter into a scorpion and go and try to bite somebody. So the movies show it because you know shaitan has to disclose what he's doing so that not to be punished by Allah because he at the end will say, oh Allah I, I told them but they chose to do that, Allah. <clears throat> As alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa what can help us build our himma to be like the ant? The salawats, the, the being of service, all of these build a himma, the meditation, all, all of these so that you can lock into this power and feel the energy, feel the power, feel the connection and that's what is a himma, it's like a fire, a zeal to do and to conquer more. So once you get a taste of the energy, get a taste of these practices, the knowledges are, are meant to entice people to come, to listen, that this is like a fountain, drink from this fountain, practice from these fountains and then you begin to feel the energy of it. Once you feel the energy of it you become addicted because there are no two. It's not like you can go somewhere else on YouTube and then get that energy again. Once you tap into that fountain you, you find out that, that there's, there's nowhere else like that that you turn on something else and you don't feel anything. 
or you don't hear anything and that's, that's the necessary sort of tool so that people become sort of attached to that energy and to that, that reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, can the zikr, La ilaha illallah, in the motion you've taught us, stop an overactive mind or voices in our mind? Yeah, definitely. That the la, la to go to the head and asking Allah to send the light that stops the thinking in the head. And illallah, illallah, illallah is to bring an energy and a power into the heart so that the heart is, is thinking is more powerful than the thinking mind. So then when you meditate, make your salawats and La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, illallah. When more of the light enters the heart so that to shut off the head and then the meditate and connect with the shaykh so that asking again also the light send into my heart and that to put a light into my head to shut off the faculty of my thinking and that overthinking everything, inshaAllah. Because the more light that someone has and the more practices then the waswas has to stay farther away. But if the waswas can come too close then that's when all the whispering, whisperings are overtaking the person. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Do turtles have a low energy? Can shaitan operate through them? Turtles? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, are we going to go through the whole animal kingdom of what the, what the energy of each animal is? No, but there are certain turtles that can take away black magic, yeah. So yeah, Mawlana would describe that uh, having a certain amount of turtles in an aquarium they can take away black magic. So that, that has its, its reality, if that's why they're asking or they just randomly came up with turtles but turtles if you have turtles in home they can take away black magic. So Allah gave a, a specific and a reality to all creatures. So cats they have a very strong zikr and they can capture creatures. That's why you see them looking around the house and running around and they seem to have their own practice going on and they have the ability with their zikr which is their purr to grab creatures. So they have a significance in spiritual cleansing. So the presence of cats within a home has a spiritual cleansing. So the, all, all of God's creatures have, uh, have a reality and, uh, and a blessing. So it's the kindness to the creatures and the love of Allah so that they pray for us and that they support us. When you love Allah Allah makes all His creatures to love you and they come around you. So people whom vibrate at very high levels and high frequencies attract bees. And you have to know that the bee doesn't sting you because it enjoys doing that because he'll die. But he's attracted to your energy if he keeps coming around you. So he's coming for that energy and he'll land on you and won't sting you because he's just attracted to your energy. But if you scare him and he has to sting you for his survival that's something different. But the reason they come around many people is their high vibration. If this creature senses you're of a bad energy they have no interest in coming around the person. Now a wasp is not the same, the bee that produces honey and sweetness is not the same. The wasp will sting everyone because he doesn't die from it, he just goes around and causes fitna. So he's like a Wahhabi <laughs> They produce no honey and they sting everyone. <laughs> We'll leave that as your last thought in your mind and yeah, stay away from wasps. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basira Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, 
Our water well give the gift of life. Our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.